What is the next big step in your life, Dreamy Dreamers? Stay tuned to find out. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Crazy Dreamer Network. My name is AJ and let's hop right into today's reading. So today's pick a card is going to be all about your next big step in life, okay? So this could translate into anything you think of, right? So typically the first thing that comes to your mind. We have three piles, pile number one, pile number two, and pile number three. Now, pile number one, we have our blue appetite crystal with acetum vinegar. Pile number two, we have our kiwi jasper, also known as sesame jasper, with aris copper. In pile number three, we have our Tortella agate with xanthosis yellowing. I'll give you all some time to meditate on your pile selection. All right, my dreamy dreamers. So we have pile number one, pile number two, and pile number three. Remember, this is a timeless reading, so whenever you guys come across this reading, it will apply to you in your life, okay? Again, I love you all so much, and I'll see you in your reading. Bye! Hey, pile number ones. Welcome back to your reading in regards to your next big step in life, okay? So you all chose this gorgeous blue appetite crystal that rules or that assists with the throat the throat, excuse me, and the third eye chakra. It also assists in development of psychic gifts. It stimulates creativity and the intellect and it, it enhances communication of all kinds. Okay. So I think it's interesting too, because with this blue, blue appetite here, we have acetum with vinegar. So I feel like your throat chakra, your, I feel like your throat chakra pile number ones will be extremely activated during this time in your life. And I feel like uh, the next big step is also a logical step is what I'm getting as well. And um, I feel like you're going to be using a lot of your intuitive faculties to speak on certain issues that could leave a sour taste in people's mouth. That's what I'm getting because we have vinegar. OK, and when I when uh, vinegar comes up and I know it's a type of. I don't know, substance that. It could be good for us and it could also leave a bitter taste in our mouths, right? So that's what I'm getting here, right? And then I also get that saying, you'll catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. So if you're trying to catch something, if you're trying to, I wanted to almost say trap something, but not in like a <laughs> insidious type of way, but like if you wanted to gain more attention in in a certain regard maybe also think about the way you speak how you convey a message as well that's what i'm getting here also it's 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 not always what you say but how you say it is what i'm getting here i do want to read a little bit from the guidebook just to give more context we have acidity distillation in memory, okay? It says the tongue knows vinegar. Even the suggestion of receiving a few drops into the mouth reminds us of vinegar sour and lip puckering qualities. In alchemy, vinegar serves as an active agent of distillation, fermentation, and preservation. It is incredibly useful when applied in the right amounts with intention. This said, it can be easily overused, overwhelming. The situation at hand when uh, and overwhelming the situation at hand. When the vinegar card presents itself in a reading, it indicates a sour note permeates the laboratory. It is likely something from the past is showing up in the present and demanding our attention. It is in vinegar's nature to take over, to overwhelm. Be cautious with this material. A little goes a long way, exactly. As they say, it is productive to look at your past, but not to stare. Such is the complex energy of vinegar, okay? And it says, view the allegorical Chinese painting, the vinegar tasters. 
And it says to ponder the wisdom of the tongue, of course, right? And then we have communication here um, or a part of communication with the blue appetite, uh, bringing emphasis into the throat chakra and simultaneously to the third eye. So it's almost like use your intuitive faculties to to teach, to lead, to speak before you just blurt something out because something could leave a sour taste in you in someone's mouth. Uh, you could leave a sour taste in someone's mouth by what you say or how you convey something or even vice versa, right? So we're going to um, put our card and crystal here and let's pull some more cards for our pile number ones, okay? Now we're going to start with the Oracle of the Radiant Sun deck, just to gain more clarity into pile number one's next big step in their life. What is our pile number one's next big step in their life? What are pile number one's next big step in life? Thank you. Okay, so we have the 12th house, Mercury and Pisces with inspiration. How about that? I feel like you're going to leave a whole bunch of people inspired or you're feeling inspired in regards to something, right? Let's gain more clarity on this. Okay. So we have the seventh house, Sun in Libra with harmony. Beautiful energy, by the way. And then we have the third house with Mars in Gemini decision. Hmm. Very interesting. Okay, so we're going to kind of structure this a little different here. I wanted to add this key just because, you know, next big step, key to life, the game of life and how to play it. I feel like, you know, all my dreamy dreamers have or will be obtaining the key in mastering their lives very soon. I feel it. Okay. Now we have the fifth house, Mars in Leo, excuse me, with egotism. That's where that vinegar card comes into play with the bottom of this deck here. But let's begin your reading. So again, inspiration, harmony, and decision. I feel like the next big and logical steps that you're going to be taking in life pile number ones, more specifically, you guys, you guys are going to be taking calculated steps and you're going to be very calculated. I feel like you, you, you are already very inspired with the Mercury in, um, Pisces energy, but you could also be taking a more calculated, harmonious approach into like how you convey a message or how you continue to inspire, whether it be yourself or the people around you, right? Because we also have Mars in Gemini with decision and we have this chessboard here. And then we have this angel sitting on this wheel. And then we have this portal or this door or this like entryway, which I think is interesting because we have the key up here as well. Although the, that will be in all three piles, but you guys kind of catch my drift. So I feel like you guys are going to, I feel like you also have learned how to tailor your message in a way in which it might hit who it needs to hit and how it needs to hit them to a certain degree, if that makes sense, right? Especially with the sun and Libra. Some of y'all could be sun, moon, rising, Libras, Libra energy. This could happen during Libra season. But what I feel like is a lot of you all are getting very serious about your life. A lot of you all are getting serious about the messages that you convey to the people around you, whether it's people who feel inspired by you or whether it's who you feel inspired by, right? And because of that, you're going to start just making more better decisions in regards to your life or how you uh, obtain a certain amount of inspiration, right? It's not going to really come from the ego. It's going to come from your intuition, your heart space. That's what I'm getting. Maybe in the past, things could have come from an egoic space, whereas now you've kind of seen the proverbial light, right? And now you're adjusting yourself accordingly, okay? So I really do want to read a little bit of this decision card. I feel like the inspiration and the harmony card are kind of self-evident, but let's see. Okay. So we have Mars action, Gemini mental awareness, and it's Mars and Gemini. So it says the chessboard symbolizes the mind in the attacking position 
In the attacking position, the nature of the competitive planet Mars, the winged will denotes the sun god, hello, and movement in the element of air and Oh, sorry. In movement in the element air or high mental activity, the doorway challenges a move into unknown territory. That's wild. So, yeah, I feel like your understanding to a degree that you could have made a move in which once you enter this proverbial doorway, it will be unknown, but you'll still get through it. OK, so now it says. When this card is drawn, it indicates the need to make a quick decision, but bear in mind that speed is not the most important factor. Exactly. Okay. It says events, a heated argument, cross-questioning someone, a fight over a contract, a regretted letter. Okay. So, but with the surrounding cards here, I really don't feel like this is as bad uh, or, or as, you know, with the events here, I feel like there is something that's coming to the forefront that you'll be able to resolve now that you have this knowledge or because you have already had the knowledge available to you, right? And you'll be able to make a proper move or a proper retort or a proper response uh, rather than just a quick or heated one, okay? So now let's get into your reading. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit. I have, okay, this is upside down. Glad I noticed that. I have cleansed the deck off camera. We're going to give it a good, quick shuffle. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck for our pile number ones, for giving them clear, concise, accurate messages in regards to the next big step in their life. What is the next big step in our pile number one, Spirit? Spirit? Ooh. Okay, so we have the seven of earth with oak. Okay, I'm getting research and development just because we have this beautiful oak tree. It's autumn. You could tell the season is autumn here. Whoever is like the observer of this scene is obviously doing some research about oaks and oak trees or what to do with the oaks once they have them, right? This is talking about investing in something, especially with the seven of earth here. This is talking about making a sound investment in something, right? Now, this did pop out in reverse. So maybe you, pile number ones, are questioning or thinking what is a proper way or what is a proper investment into something, okay? And these could also be connected, the seven of earth with uh, the seventh house as well. You're thinking about leaving, investing in something very tangible here, okay? But let's see. Tell us more, Spirit. What what are pile number one's, what is pile number one's next big step in life? What is our pile number one's next big step in life? Now, this could be a huge investment that you've been thinking about making or that you have already decided to make, okay? And only you will know what that is. Okay, thank you. Now we have the two of earth with the two of pentacles with witch hazel. And I think it's interesting because look at the contrast. This is winter and this is autumn. Maybe you made this investment or the decision to make an investment like this during the winter months or once winter comes and we have witch hazel. Now I know, I don't know too much about witch hazel, but I know it's a good, it's an astringent, if that makes sense for your face. You could use it in other things too, but I know people use it as like an astringent for their face. Um, we'll get more into that in a bit, but yeah. But the two of earth, seven of pentacles and the two of earth talks about balancing something, maybe even having two streams of income. This could be investing your money wisely into something because you could have a lot on your plate here with the two of earth in the traditional Rider Waite tarot. The two of earth is depicted by a jester, kind of like juggling two pentacles, right? Um, as they have to keep their emotions very stabilized, right? Okay, tell us more, Spirit. What is our pile number one's next big step in life? What is pile number one's next big step in life? I'm going to take all of these. So let's see. We have the Hia of Water with Chamomile. Okay, this is Pisces energy as well. So some of you all, 
pile number ones. Spirit is asking you to listen to your intuition very clearly, almost like childlike, because there could be a message, a, a message of good news or something like that coming in for you with the Hia of water. The Hia of water represents the page of cups. OK, so the page of water. But let's see. Then we have the curandera of water, which is the king of cups here. Seaweed. We have card number 20 with awakening, Tulsi. We have the we have card number eight, another major arcana with strength, garlic. Okay, so let's see where we're gonna put this card at. I'll put this in the middle. And then we have another major arcana pile number ones with the chariot cedar something's coming full circle and it's because you decided to like i'm getting bet on yourself type of energy i'm getting like you have definitely made a, a decision to invest in yourself to invest in yourself with this seven of earth here and you're going to have the strength and the capacity to juggle it and what i'm getting with this uh with this, uh, this in particular, this major arcana strength with garlic, spirit wants you to take good care of your health, take good care of yourself because you will be able to maintain <clears throat> a certain lifestyle or a certain decision or an investment that you have made through being able to take care of yourself. And I say that because the garlic and honey remedy is like a natural, like a cough syrup or a, a health. It's almost like a, a natural, like, yeah, like a cough syrup, like a, like, you know, if you get like a syrup from, you know, your doctor or prescription um, for a cough or sore throat or something like that, this is like a natural remedy to help you with your health. So that's what I'm getting here. Like, if you feel like, hey, I made this decision and it's a pre it's pretty out there, um, will I be able to keep it up, right? Will I be able to have the strength and the due diligence to be able to see this to fruition or to, you know, once I have this manifestation or whatever the case, I just seen 1555 on the, on the, um, time clock. So that's 555 five, five major change, right? Once I see that, will I be able to, to keep it up? That's just what I'm getting. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Okay. I feel like you've conquered your emotion to an extent you conquered your emotions to an extent as well, pile number ones. And I say that because we literally have the Hia of water, which is the page of cups to the Corandera of water, which is the king of cups. You cannot make this up. And you can see that this baby here, this, this toddler here is being helped to pour some tea into their own cup. And it, whereas Whereas now you've grown up so much to the, <laughs> if it starts again, guys, I'm just keep going. Whereas now you've grown up to the point where you can pour your own, you could pour into yourself. You don't have to have someone else to help you pour into you anymore. This is independence. This is emotional independence too, emotional intelligence. And you see how the lands were kind of barren here and they were quite a ways from the water now they're in direct view of it and they are relishing in it pile number ones how beautiful is this reading just continue to take care of yourself put yourself first take care of your health especially with this strength card gar garlic this remedy some of you all can even um use this remedy to keep up your immune system that's what i was kind of trying to say to be healthy to to have more healthy like an internal basis of health okay you guys have grown and whatever is coming in for you you deserve it right and it's a victory apparently here with the chariot cedar energy and then you look we have this circle this mandala with this beautiful blossoming cedar tree it's in the shape of a cedar tree but it's really like the leaves or the whatever you call this um and you're you're just growing there's like this full circle moment that's coming to be in your life and then on top of that pile number ones you are laying down really strong roots right now whether you whether you got whether you all know that or realize that or not you are through you investing in something. And then look, we have this oak and then we have cedar. And then we see this mighty oak with this thick, 
the, you know what I'm saying? This thick um, body here, but their roots are strong. You could tell just by how thick and dense this tree is. Whew, pile number ones. And then with card number 20, awakening, Tulsi. Tulsi is a great plant to have uh, regardless, right? So I am filming this. Um, tomorrow is the new moon in excuse me, the new moon in Taurus. And I've heard that Tulsi is a really great plant to use in a spiritual bath. Some of you all might manifest something while you're concocting a spiritual bath and using Tulsi and seaweed, if you have it, could really work wonders even for your health or something like that, for your internal and your external health, so to speak, for your overall wellness. Also, what I'm getting here is with Tulsi, awakening you guys are entering into a new dimension of your life and into another um it's almost like you're having an, an another awakening moment right or at least it feels that way but you guys have one two three three major arcanas like you cannot make that up and then you have the page to the king of cups emotionally you guys have mastered your your lives to a degree emotionally for sure and i feel like now you're working towards mastering your external okay so now we're going to get one last card before we end your reading we're using the moonology manifestation deck thank you god thank you spirit for cleansing and blessing this deck for giving our pile number ones clear concise accurate messages wow okay so this came out i do want to shuffle this a little more because i'm getting it came out kind of prematurely full moon in capricorn take a reality check it's very interesting because we have the full moon in capricorn capricorns in essence are very hard workers they're very ambitious they're very diligent and they go after what they want now this take a reality check i feel like some of you all might be this could be the reality check that's coming in for you, like your next big step. Like, yes, it's time. Look, we have new moon in Scorpio with go deeper. Exactly. It's time to like really do what it is that you have been maybe wanting to do for quite some time, but you felt like now isn't the time or da 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 da. I don't know if I could do this, but I feel like spirit is giving you a reality check. Like, yes, you do just take inspired action. And if you are in balance with your heart and mind, you can't make a wrong decision. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm getting here. But I do want to um, ask spirit for a little bit more clarity. Last messages for our pile number one spirit to conclude their reading, advice, guidance, and wisdom for pile number ones to conclude their reading. Okay. Now look, we have last quarter moon in Sagittarius with practice gratitude and it did come in reverse. I usually don't read Oracle cards in reverse, but I'm getting you need to, uh, or the suggestion here, right, is to be grateful for every single thing in every way, especially in, in all times, right? But especially right now, if you're trying to make something come into fruition kind of quick. Be grateful and thankful for the things that you currently have in your life, right? Full moon and Pisces, forgive. I feel like you need to really forgive yourself, forgive everyone around you. I feel like you have pile number ones a lot. That's why that huge um, step really from the Hia of water, which is the page of cups to the king of cups you have. You've gained a sense of emotional intelligence that most people won't in their lifetime, right? So let's see. I do want to read a little bit. I know this is a longer message, so bear with me. But I do want to read a little bit for the full moon in Capricorn. Okay, it says that card has two sides of it, literally and metaphorically. If you've been worrying about something, the good news is that you shouldn't waste another moment worrying as this won't help. Some things only happen once that can be really good news. Okay, and it says if you're wondering about how something you're keen on is going to turn out, this this card could be a sign you've hit a roadblock. If you want to change that, you're going to need to put an extra effort with your manifesting work. Exactly. Spiritual baths 
practicing gratitude on a daily basis at all times if you can, right? Um, and just balancing yourself. It says, find a balance between facing your reality and be kind to yourself and others. Forgive yourself and others, right? And it says, manifesting mindset. If you're not happy with the message of this card, use the old trick of finding the best thought you can about your situation and go from there. And it says, um, um, okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Your manifestation affirmation, everything is always working out in my favor. Keep saying that. Everything is always working out for my favor, in my favor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, and it says when to manifest your magic. The best time to work your magic is when the moon is in Capricorn on Saturday, Saturn's day, or Saturn's hour. Okay. So yeah, so basically continue to practice gratitude. I feel like that spirit's direct message for you or advice is to continue to practice gratitude at every waking moment, every chance you can. Because you know what? I know this is overused, but if you are able to watch this and to watch it through, you are, you're blessed, pile number ones. You're blessed. I know you. we can all, we all want more blessings and things of that nature but you are blessed okay so with that being said i love you all so much my dreamy dreamers if this message resonated with you please hit that thumbs up button like share and subscribe share this content with loved ones family friends or anyone who would best benefit from the messages provided here today if y'all are interested in a gorgeous one-of-a-kind tarot journal or to book a private reading with me look no further go down to my website my link is in the bio and go book with me and go by a tarot journal. I love you all so much and I'll see you in your next reading. Bye. Hey, pile number twos. Welcome back to your reading in regards to your next big step in life. Remember, this is a timeless reading. So whenever you come across this reading, it should apply to your life. Okay. So now let's get into your crystal. You all chose this gorgeous Kiwi Jasper, also known as Sesame Jasper. Okay. And it is associated with joy, communication, and protection. It supports the heart chakra and us at times of stress. And and it um, creates internal and external harmony, harmony and balance. And it's a grounding stone, one of the most underrated protection stones available to us. Okay. So with that being said, <clears throat> you all's, <clears throat> excuse me, pile selection cards, you guys dig it too. Okay. But your first one is Eris with copper. All right. And I know copper is a pretty grounding, stabilizing stone as well. I don't know what these alchemical symbols are. This almost looks like Mercury, but we're missing like the little horns in the circle. Um, but we'll we'll get more about that. But I'm getting earthy energy, right? <clears throat> and copper, I know co copper is a really great conduit for harnessing other energies. Okay, but we'll we'll get more and we'll get more specifics as we move forward with your reading. So we're gonna <clears throat> keep your card right here. And then our uh, your next card is Numa with Breathe, okay? I feel like you're going to be able to breathe easier. And look at how these cards are very similar to one another, especially with the rays that they're projecting through these different like orbs or stones that these rays are kind of surrounded by. This is giving me sun rays as well, but like a brighter day, like you're shining through something here. But I know these cards are connected in some way because they look very similar, extremely similar. And then on top of that pile number um, twos, this talks about joy, right? Especially with the Kiwi Jasper, joy, communication, and protection. It's almost like you're so protected right now, you, you know, spirit wants you to really know that and, and, and double and harness that energy, right? You can breathe light. You can breathe easy. Maybe you breathe life into people by how you communicate to them, right? But let's, without further delay, let's read a little bit from each of these cards. I'll keep it very brief. So we have Numa with breath, inspiration, presence, and life force. You bring life into people, Okay, take one deep, full breath. It says to ponder the first breath, okay? That's where I'm gonna leave this. You breathe life into people, okay? You give, give people joy. You give people inspiration, thing, hope, right? So let's now let's see copper. Fertility, the womb, and Venus. You breathe life into people, pile number twos. A lot of you can breathe life, okay? 
now I have to read this. It says, in ancient times on an island called Cyprus, copper was mined extensively to make vessels and tools. This island is the same fertile ground of Aphrodite, the goddess associated with the planet Venus and the forces of love, pleasure, and fertility. Such is the magic of copper. This golden-hued metallic incites delight and mystique, even a sense of awe. The copper card marks the arrival of Eros into the laboratory. It is likely the alchemist has been hard at work for far too long, prioritizing scholarly pursuits over sensual pleasure. Get ready for a shift of priorities, for an awakening of the heart and the life-generating centers of the body. In the true alchemical experiment, nothing is excluded or separate from the work. Bring sensuality into the fold and embrace it with reverence and curiosity and curiosity aphrodite smiles upon you so some of you all could be working with the goddess aphrodite or have been wanting to like know more about the goddess aphrodite and i feel like this is your cue to do that okay it will it will benefit you uh if you learn more about this goddess right it says go deeper visit or learn about the statue of liberty the largest copper structure in the world i had no idea pile number two's no idea it says to ponder, chocolate contains copper. Chocolate contains copper. I want you guys to just sit on that for a while. Now, I don't know what this key is made of. It, it could be made of brass or something like that. But something told me, hey, put this key as a ornament in your readings today. So this could be copper. It might just be brass, but it's giving copper energy. So it says in esoteric wisdom traditions, Venus and copper are associated with the kidneys. A letting go is likely required in order to embrace eros with open arms. Okay. Oh, and I got to show you guys something in a minute, but I'll show you in a minute. Okay. So it said, so this was Mercury. You remember when I said Mercury, guys, look at that. That is Mercury. And then look at this. Why does this look like a key here? <laughs> Interesting. So it says, um, though bright and warm when polished, copper quickly oxidates, turning green or blue. Discern if a metaphorical polishing up is in order. <laughs> That's wild. That is so wild, pile number twos. Okay, so this is beautiful energy. Get ready for your joy to accelerate. You know, maybe you have been thinking about polishing up something, polishing up your act, polishing up, you know, your skills, your capabilities, uh, yourself even, right? Maybe leaning more towards, uh, you know, taking a holistic pro approach or doing something that will just refine yourself, okay? I'm definitely getting refinement, especially with the Aphrodite reference. And to ponder chocolate contains copper, you can, that's so wild. That's so, that's brilliant. Okay, but let's continue on with messages on um, your next big step in life. What is our pile number two's next big step in life? Okay, so we have the sixth house moon in Virgo with order, polishing up your craft, you know, polishing up your act, I'm just cleaning up your act. That's what I'm getting. Putting things in order and in alignment. I feel like a lot of you all are have really been thinking about uh, becoming more in align, becoming aligned with what you want or your capabilities, right? But let's see. Tell us more, spirit. Clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number twos in regards to um, their next big step in life. What is pile number two's next big step in life? We have the 10th house moon in Capricorn with practicality. And look at these worker bees here. I'm just now noticing these worker bees and how everyone has their call or their life's task. And I feel like you're getting a lot of things in order. You're getting a lot of your priorities in order. I feel like you are in lockstep and key with, with the world. I'm getting like productive member of society. Like you guys are putting in the work. And your steps are being ordered. And because of that, you feel like a productive member of society. You feel like, hey, I'm using this practicality. I'm working towards something, towards an objective, towards a goal. And I'm in lockstep and key and in harmony, right? I'm in harmony and balance with the world, with earth, with mother earth. <laughs> that is beautiful energy. Let's put these cards more up here. I love this, love this, love this pile number twos. Now let's continue. Tell us more, Spirit. What is our pile number two's next 
big step in life? What is pile number two's next big step in life spirit? Thank you. Oh, I love this. And we have the fourth house moon in Cancer with friendship. Okay, some of you all could be really nurturing a friendship or companionship. Maybe you're even more of a friend to yourself. You love yourself. You are really just doubling down on the beauties, the beauty in life and all of its simplicity. And a lot of us don't even realize how, how much friendship is an integral part in our evolution, right? As people, as spirits, right? Maya Angelou always says, if you want to be a friend, you if you want friends, you have to know how to be a friend, right? So maybe there's this beauty or acknowledgement of the fact that you have been a friend to many people. And you know what's interesting? We have all moon energies, moon, moon, moons. And the moon represents emotions. The moon represents um, your inner world, right? intuition. So there could be a friend coming back or there could be an intuitive uh, call to you from a friend or something along those lines. And we'll get more into that. But I also want to make the parallels with card number six and card number four, six and four, that equates to 10. So you could be seeing 10, 10 a lot. There, there could be that there could be a factor in this reading that activates your claircognizance because the number 10 or 1010, if you, you guys could look it up, it is associated with claircognizance. Knowing something, but you don't really know why you know it. It's just a natural inclination in your spirit that you, you know something, right? And we have at the bottom of the deck, the second house with Jupiter in Taurus with status. Your status, I feel like you're raising your your status quo, like you are no longer just adhering to the status quo, pile number twos, excuse me. And number two, right? Pile number twos, number two, your status, you're moving up your status in life. And this could be through a friendship or a connection, right? Maybe even a status of a friendly relationship could be moving up a tier to where you guys are just like thick as thieves or so to, so to speak, right? And I think it's funny because we have two people here and two people here. Maybe you all have reached a certain status with a friend through just agreeing on something as well, right? They say, if two of you on earth shall agree as touching a thing, then it should be giving, it should be given from my father who art in heaven or something like that. I'm paraphrasing. It's a Bible quote. I think it's Matthew 18, 19, but don't quote me. Just go do you guys' due diligence. But that's what I'm getting here. Like almost like a manifestation came true because, or it will be coming true because you and a friend have doubled down on what it is that you want and you guys both want it for each other. Or this this doesn't have to be necessarily a friend, but this could be a person who you're friendly with, a confidant. Uh, this could be a relationship too, but regardless of the case pile number two, you guys are rising in ranks. You guys are up in your status and I feel like someone else is coming with you. Also with Jupiter and Taurus, this could be because I think Jupiter is currently in Taurus, but for sure we're in Taurus season. So it's making you want to work harder. It's making you very practical. Earth signs are very practical. They're very stable, right? So it's making you want to get all of your affairs in order. Okay. So let's see. Let's get into your tarot cards. Okay, thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck for our pile number twos. Tell us, give us more insight, Spirit, deeper insight into our pile number two's next big step in life. Look at that. You guys seen how this just flipped out. We have card number 10, Major Arcana of the Will of Fortune with Kitchen Garden, okay? This is a huge mandala with a compass in the middle. Some of you all could have been gravitated towards compasses or you've been seeing compasses a lot or whatever if you have this is your sign some of you all have been thinking about really starting up a garden or you know really incorporating more plant life or nature into your um just your everyday um let's see we also have curandera of air with rosemary rosemary could really help you guys to make decisions or to be more um impeccable with your words is what i'm getting curandera of air is a king of swords okay so i feel like whatever you guys say goes so to speak i'm getting uh, I, I thought i was getting a slight ringing in my left ear whatever you whatever sometimes some for some of you my gosh Whatever you say goes. And I feel like you're very focused and clear right now with rosemary. People burn rosemary 
in order to become very clear with their directive and, and what it is that they want, right? Um, so I feel like burning rosemary could help a lot of you all right now. Some of you all could be air signs, uh, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, or um, some of you all could just have those qualities around you right now. Or maybe a friend is a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. But regardless, pile number pile number twos, uh, you guys are very clear in your directive. I'm getting ace of swords more so. Like you're clear, you're sharp, you're to the point. Like you're not playing any games when it's com when it comes to your future right now. So let's see. Tell us more, spirit. What is our pile number two's next big step in their life? Look at this. What did I say? You're not playing any games. We have the major arcana, the emperor with hemlock, okay? You're presiding over your lands right now. You are taking action steps, practical steps when it comes to facilitating something and um, facilitating a certain level of control over something, right? You're telling people where to go. You could be taking a very big leadership role right now, pile number ones. I mean, pile number twos. And it's interesting because we have order here, right? And then we have the emperor. Now, the emperor represents Aries, right? Which represents war and which represents um, fire energy, right? The fire element. Now, what I'm getting here is the emperor traditionally is known for their orderly chaos, right? Like, it, it amidst chaos, that's where they kind of find their natural order, right? But we have order here. I feel like spirit is pointing you into this leadership direction because if you really think about it, we have the Kurandera of Air uh, pointing to this Emperor card. It's almost like, no, you do it. You take autonomy. You go first. And then uh, other people will, you know, take order or you, you fall in line, so to speak, right? But let's see, let's see. Tell us more, Spirit. Wow, this is deep, pile number twos. Clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number twos. What is the next big step in our pile number twos? Life, Spirit. What is the next big step for our pile number twos? Look, we have the nine of air. Prior to me, shuffling the ten of air was at the bottom of the deck. I'm getting feel the fear and do it anyway. Whatever you're worried about, you don't have to worry about it. You just have to perform or you have to act. Especially with the emperor card, the emperor presides over the lands, right? So the emperor is is a leader, natural born leader is capable, but they're naturally they're a natural born leader leader because they're able they're a natural born leader because they're capable and they're able to lead themselves, right? It's almost like that notion you have to have been led in order to know how to lead, so to speak, right? You have to have had a boss in order to know how to be a boss, so to speak, right? So that's what I'm getting here, the nine of air, pomegranate. Whatever you're worried, whatever anxieties that you have, that's okay. We're human, we have those, but don't let it stop you. Don't let it dictate your next step, right? And it's interesting because we have Numa with breathe, and then we have the nine of air, with pomegranate. And I feel like with the nine of air, again, this talks about anxiety, worries, sleepless nights, right? But it's not necessarily just for ourselves. It could be about for other people, right? In regards to other people, their direction, their aim, whatever. This could be in regards to a friend, right? You could be a little anxious or nervous for a friend, but instead of being anxious or nervous for them, because this could be a new beginning in one of you's lives, right? This could be in your life. This could be in another person's lives. But how you can maybe help them to combat that is through taking your own life serious, is through taking uh, autonomy and self-control over your life. And maybe they will be inspired or led by example. I'm going to end up clarifying this nine of swords, but let's just pull our last card and see. Tell us more, spirit. Give us deeper insight into our pile number two's next big step in their life. Next big step in our pile number two's life. Thank you. Look at that. We have card number 14 with temperance, with 
Camellia. Look at how beautiful this card is. This is one of my favorite cards in this deck. And it's like an herbal tea. And look at the setup. It's like per in perfect order, in perfect alignment. So I feel like whatever it is that you're worrying about, pile number twos, don't sweat it, right? Alchemize it. You can alchemize a situation by setting it up and making it look beautiful or, you know, setting yourself up in this really beautiful, harmonious way, right? Again, this Kiwi Jasper or the Sesame Jasper talks about joy, communication, and protection. You're protected. You really don't have anything to worry about but worry itself. What's at the bottom of this deck? Two of Earth. Yeah, you could be juggling a lot. You could be... Um, a lot could be required from you right now, but that's okay because I feel like you have the strength and the capacity to do this and to do it in such a way that it benefits you and everyone involved. This could be in regards to a friendship though, but let's see. Okay, so I will be clarifying this card, but I do want to read a little bit. It says, no love, no grief. Claim your underworld crown. You are the sky. Everything else is the weather. Who Pima Cho drawn. Okay. And then this is pomegranate. It says the branches of a tall pomegranate tree sag with the ripe, heavy fruit. Beyond the tree, a pathway leads to a desert mountain. The sun disappears, then reappears underneath unpredictable storm clouds. On a table inside, a large pomegranate is split open with a bowline. Red juice and it says with a bowline, and these kind of look like bowlines, but I think this could be a little different too. Anyways, it says red juice drips, seeds scatter on the floor. And it says, let go of what you cannot control. Okay, I thought we had control here. We don't, but we have order and we have the emperor, which screams control, right? Let go of what you cannot control. Pomegranate is the tree that leads to Demeter's agonizing loss in the Greek myth. Her daughter Persephone consumes the seeds and seals her fate as queen of the underworld. As a hike through the desert will prove, pain is one path to wisdom. When heartache enters your life, do not turn away. In the prophet, in the prophet, Khalil Gibran says, the deeper that sorrow carves into your being, the more joy you can contain. What did I just say with the Kiwi Jasper? Joy, communication, and protection. That is wild. Okay, the deeper that sorrow carves into your being, the more joy you can contain. Do not hurry your grief. Pomegranate fruit must be harvested at just the right time. It will not ripen off the tree. You will live through shattering experiences and still stand proud. When you are ready, quench the thirst, quench the thirst of guilt, regret, and worry. Invite in forgiveness. Okay, it says crafting with the nine of air, write your grief with a feather in pomegranate juice, tear, tear open a pomegranate, enjoy the seeds, claim your underworld crown, drink pomegranate juice to calm the spirit and heal the heart when it is overcome by emotion. So there could be something going on emotionally or uh, with a friend or something that maybe, you know, some something's going on. We'll clarify this in a moment here, but I feel like you will get through this pile number twos like beautifully, right? You'll be able to share in the joy and the laughter in regards to, you know, you and a friend when it comes to something. This could be in regards to work too, because they're tending the fields, they're working. Everything is being set up for success here, right? And then we have the emperor here. So, it, and the curandera of air, which is the king of swords, represents work or business. So this could be in regards to a business relationship or a friendship that, you know, a friend that was involved in business with you or vice versa, whatever the case, right? But let's see, let's clarify this nine of air. Clarify this nine of swords, hold on. Look, and look at what flipped up, the three of water, which is the three of cups, that's wild. Tell us more, spirit. Clarify this nine of swords for our pile number twos. Why is this nine of swords here for our pile number twos? Clarify this nine of swords. Okay, beautiful. Oh, this is beautiful. We have the two of water and the ace of cups. Very interesting. The ace of water and the two of cups. This talks about something in regards to a connection, though, like a friendship. Ace of air in reverse. Okay. 
And then we have the Madre of Earth, which is the Queen of Pentacles with the Crisoto bush. And they're offering something. Someone could be giving you something, an offer or something, but can be kind of anxious about how to come about this, how to phrase it, how to word it. This is becoming a very long reading pile number twos, but regardless, everything's going to be okay. It looks like a beautiful reading, to be honest. Ace of Water and the Two of Cups. Some of you all could be starting a brand new relationship or a brand new, could be anxious about a brand new start in a relationship. This could be a friendship or something, a friendship that turns into a relationship, something like that. It's very interesting. Okay, so let's... Uh, in your reading tell us more spirit advice guidance and advice guidance and wisdom for our pile number twos to end their reading clear concise accurate advice guidance and wisdom for our pile number twos to conclude their reading ah, full moon in taurus detoxify now tomorrow is the new moon in taurus it could be today or tomorrow or today tomorrow or the eighth right it says detoxify. Spirit might want you to fast or detox in some way, shape, or form. Obviously, I'm not a physician, not a doctor. So consult with, you know, a doctor or a health practitioner before you do anything of the sorts I would recommend. But yeah, it's like detoxify, like clear your mind, clear your energy, you know, new moon and Aries, go for it. There's something that spirit wants you to go for that is going to work wonders in your life. That's going to be great. You might, I'm just getting, fill the fear and do it anyway. This is what this is talking about. And lead by example. Once you lead by example, maybe your friendships or a relationship could will blossom because you're actually showing up for yourself and, you're, and that encourages another person to show up for themselves, okay? So yeah, pile number two is beautiful reading. Let me know in the comments if you guys know what this is about, if you guys resonate with this message, okay? I love you all so much. Um, if you did like this reading, please hit the thumbs up button, like, share, and subscribe, share this content with loved ones, family, friends, or anyone who will best benefit from the messages provided here today. If y'all are interested in a gorgeous one-of-a-kind tarot journal, or to book a private reading with me, look no further. The link to my website is in my description box down below, and you can do just that. <laughs> all right. I love you all so much and I'll see you in your next reading. Bye. Hey, pile number threes. Welcome back to your reading. So let's hop right in with your next big step in life. Okay. Remember, this is a timeless reading. So whenever you come across this message, it should apply to you. All right. So let's hop into your crystal selection. You all chose the Toratella agate, okay? Toratella agate. It's really giving like ancient, like animal, reptilian energy, right? But it says it amplifies grounding energy and helps boost courage and power by connecting you to your inner strength, okay? So you all have xanthosis with yellowing. So, oh my gosh, I'm... Uh, I'm just now looking at this, looking how similar these scales, this is what I'm, this is what I was getting, very scaly energy here with um, this Toratella agate. And then we have the snake here. I'm just now putting two, two and two together. That's awesome. But yeah, with xanthosis and yellowing. So I feel like you could be shedding a layer of yourself. You could be, there could be like a ripe opp opportunity for transmutation or transition or pivot or something like that. I'm just getting the scales of a snake and like you may be shedding these scales like that. Come on. You cannot, how unparalleled is that? That is uncanny. Um, but again, xanthosis and, and we have a yellow snake here, right? Yellow is the color of the solar plexus chakra, right? So that has a lot to do with your power. That has a lot to do with your core, right? Something hitting you at the core or of the core of something, the bane of your existence, something like that. And then, um, also the sun, right? Yellow is the sun. Some of y'all could be Leos. This could be about your pride. Uh, but again, I'm just getting, I am getting inner strength, but I'm, I'm getting solar plexus energy, your core, um, the operating power of something, right? And, and being confident, something in regards to confidence as well. I want to read a little bit of this card for you all, but let's see. Oh, I just passed it. Okay, so it says aging, transitioning, and warning, right? 
It says, indicating transition, the yellowing leads us into the next phase of our alchemical work. Envision the yellowing as pages of a beloved novel or the ochre blanket of leaves in fall. This color seeps out to signify the beginning of the end, a return to zero. Even a deep bruise finds a yellow tint as it reaches its final phase, phases of healing. In contrast, yellow can be the maker of a long-awaited growth as seen in the first rays of the sun and the cheer of Forsythia in February. I don't know what that is, but um, whatever its message, yellowing tells the truth. It leads us forward like the vibrant canary in the mine, warning of what's to come. Take heed. The transition is here, whether by yoke or bile. How to respond to it is up to you. It's likely you already know. So, and this is through change, right? This is through change. So I feel like for a lot of you all, pile number threes, you guys are going through a deep metamorphosis right now, but it's to condition you and, and um, to help you grow and to propel you into the future that you've been asking for, so to speak, right? So we're going to put these up here. And let's um let's just delve straight into the rest of your reading pile number pile number threes. I I feel like this could be happening during summer. We're already in spring, right? So the yellow, obviously, the sun is definitely giving summer energy. There could be a massive change coming in for you during the summer. Okay, tell us more, spirit. What is the next big step in our pile number three's life? Look at this. Now we have. The seventh house moon in Libra with companionship. This did come in reverse too, but I, I'm not getting to take it in reverse. Um, it's interesting here. Let me cover them up. But we have these like women in alignment, right? And they're shaking or agreeing on something. So there could be, you could be making like a merger or agreeing to something, a contract or something with uh, someone you're very close with. But let's see, let's get more uh energy here let's get more messages here we also have at the bottom of the deck the sun and cancer with resourcefulness this could be talking about home situation and how resourceful you have been in order to make a connection or a friendship or something like that let me see tell us more spirit clear concise accurate messages for our pile number threes the next big step in their life look at this you guys seen it we have the second house sun in taurus with acquisition this could be taking place during taurus season as well okay the sun in Taurus, and this talks about the sun, uh, acquisition, you could be really coming into something very beautiful, something very prosperous, okay? You could be acquiring a friendship or a companionship or an agreement with someone, maybe a Libra. Some of you all may have your, your Taurus sun and your Libra moon, okay? If this is the case, this message is really will ring true for you all is what I'm getting. But there's a change here. There's a metamorphosis or a transition happening for you. Come on. We have the 10th house, Mars in Capricorn with authority. You know what it is? I feel like a lot of you guys are take, taking uh, control of your situation and, and your environment and your, your life. <laughs> Basically, you're ready. The time is ripe. This could be happening now during tourist season or this could be happening during the summer when the sun is perpetually out, right? But whatever it is, you're ready. You've grown through something. Now you're ready to make a uh, a huge change or a huge metamorphosis in your life and you're ready to agree to something. Especially with acquisition, you guys could be acquiring more authority. You guys could be acquiring more power or taking more power and authority and autonomy over your life or over your living situation because we do have the, I thought I've seen the fourth house somewhere, but whatever. There's an agreement that's coming into you that's going to make you the oper operating, the operant, power of your life basically okay and you guys are going to know what to do with it when it comes this is giving me hierophant energy as well which i think is interesting because it's mars in capricorn capricorns are very calculated and they're very hard workers ambitious people and they tend to be overachievers or at least they tend to um they just tend to be very ambitious people, okay? This could be due to the confidence that they have within their ability to make change. With the 10th house, I'm getting you're becoming an authority in your field. So whatever field you're in, 
whatever you do for work, whatever you do as your career, you're going to be stepping up. Okay. It's time. Some of you all might be getting a raise here. Something like that. Okay. Hold on. Let's read a little bit. So Mars action, and it says Capricorn duty and perseverance. It says a king stands firm, holding symbols of authority and power. The orb with the globe topped by a cross represents traditionally the church's power over the world. Here, the cross is the equal sided cross of earth. The power of the material world challenges the spirit. That's wild because this is almost like a fusion between the emperor and the hierophant. So it says when this card appears, it can indicate a need for the questioner to take control of the situation by asserting authority. Yeah. Alternatively, it may be necessary to seek the help of a person in power, right? It says events, ambitious moves requiring great self-control. It says being in a position of power over less reliable people, a lonely job with great responsibility, seeking help from someone in a position of authority. Okay, so ultimately I stand on what I've just said prior, but if those messages resonate with you all, please take them. If they don't, leave them. But you guys are becoming the own your own operating power in your life. You guys are claiming your authority, your autonomy, and your you're kicking butt and taking names. That's what I will say. You guys could be agreeing to work with someone or to um, acquire something with something. Okay. Some of y'all could be getting married too is what I'm getting. But if anything, you're agreeing on a contract with something perhaps. Okay. So what's at the bottom of this deck? We have the eighth house with Saturn in Scorpio with inheritance. Now, this could be a, an inheritance. Some of y'all could be moving. We have a castle here. Uh, this could you could be inheriting something, maybe even a job position you could be inheriting or something like that. You could be claiming a role, right? It's interesting because we have a maze here. So I feel like this is a long time coming. Like you had to, I don't want to say jump through hoops, but you had to like figure out a puzzle piece. Like there was something you really had, you really had to take the long route. It wasn't an easy route to get here. But let's move forward. Pile number threes with your messages. I have already cleansed the deck off camera, but we're going to give it one good shuffle before we begin. Tell us more spirit, clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number threes. Tell us more. Give us deeper insight and clarity into our pile number three's next big step in life. Thank you. So we have the Ten of Fire with Comb Free. I feel like there's going to be a lot on your plate or there has been a lot on your plate, pile number threes. Um, you know, it's almost like you're almost to your destination. You see how like this person here, it, it kind of looks like a hectic, chaotic scene because they're trying to, they're cooking something. They're cooking up something, but they're almost done here, right? With all these ingredients out on the table, with all this, these pots and pans, you can tell that they're working something up and that, you know, once they're done, the meal is going to be just that good, okay? But let's see, tell us more, Spirit, in regards to the next big step in our pile number three's life. What's the next big step in our pile number three's life? Give us deeper insight and clarity into the next big step in our pile number three's life. Wow, okay. We have the curandera of air with rosemary. This is talking about immense focus. Focus on something because you're almost done here. You're almost to the finish line. Curandera of air is a king of swords. This could be in business. You guys have like, this could have been like, 10, 10, day, 10 days, 10 months. This could have taken 10 months to manifest or 10 years to manifest, but there's this ripening here and you're you're almost like ready to be the authority of your life. Maybe it's taking you 10 years to get here or something like that because the wand's energy could represent time. Tell us more, Spirit, for our pile number threes. Give us deeper insight and clarity into pile number threes next big step in their life okay look at that come on you can't make this up we have card number 19 the sun saying johnsworth you're about to enter into your golden era pile number threes and it took you some time to get here but you're ready y'all are about to enter this golden era you just are look at this four of cup four of water here with mint mint 
Okay, look at how beautiful this is. You're setting up to feel refreshed and renewed and rejuvenated. And I'm getting summertime. I'm getting summertime. This is summertime energy here. So you guys could be gearing up to like do something big during the summer or like have a really a next big step in your life during the summer. Because not only do we have the four of water with mint here, the four of water, which is the four of cups, tends to represent luxury, right? Like you have so many options available to you. You don't even know which one to pick. That is a luxury, right? Options and opportunity even if it's so much, you don't even know where to begin to pick. That is a luxury that people don't have on a daily basis, right? And I feel like it's because you've remained focused or you've really stood your course or direction in life. You remain focused with the dead of air. It's almost like whatever you say goes, like you speak your life into existence. Okay the madre of earth with the crisoto of bush you could be very resourceful at this time or you could be having a lot of resources at your disposal as well pile number three this is very beautiful look at this we have the two of fire with bee balm you're on the right path you know you're planning you're taking action you might feel motivated uh then look at that sun <clears throat> rising in the background of this whatever this is this desk or tool shed and then we have another sunflower here imagery carved into this desk or workspace and we have bee balm with these like little daisies or i don't know what type of flowers those are that's wild so yeah you're about to enter uh, a the next big step in your life which is uh, gonna be very beautiful i'm just getting your golden era your golden era, St. John's wort, right? St. John's wort is a uh, herb that helps with seasonal depression, right? Because it kind of brings the sun to you. It brings the vitamin D into you. A lot of the time, seasonal depression stems from us lacking vitamin D because we're not going outside as much or we're not exposed to the sun, which has the ample amount of vitamin D that we need on a daily basis in order to kind of like keep our moods up or to keep our moods regulated. But what I'm getting here is that like this era of your life is going to be like dense with vitamin D-esque energy, right? Sun, sun, sun. Look at this may be because you've offered something to the world. You've given your portion, right? This is also giving me divine feminine energy, like an offering an offering. I was also going to recommend pile number threes. If you have not seen my uh, What Spirit Wants to Offer You Right Now reading, go watch that. Go watch that reading. Go pick one of those cards um, in the reading because I feel like there's another message there for you as well. Okay. Let me see. Uh, let's clarify this tent of fire. I really feel like I don't really need to. I feel like your whatever it is that you've been working diligently on you're almost to your goal or your objective when it comes to it but let's see clarify this ten of fire for our pile number three spirit why is this ten of wands here for pile number three look at this we have the adelita of fire with cayenne okay and the adelita of fire is the knight of wands okay so there could be an adventure or something that you want to go with, look. And then we have at the bottom of the deck, the Empress with Rose. There is an offering here. Now, Spirit is telling you to keep on going because I feel like you're, you're, you, there is a ways to go, but you're almost there. You've mastered your thought, your thoughts, right? You've mastered your thought patterns. Now it's time to master just time or like taking action because you've mastered your thoughts. You have impeccable thoughts and you know where you want to go you have clarity in regards to what you want to go keep going that's what i'm getting here because this is going to come to fruition with the emperor with the empress excuse me rose right card number three look how beautiful this is right and then on top of that there's this offering coming in but with the empress energy she is in the receiving mode so be ready to receive keep taking and doing your due diligence and taking the natural next step and the next step and the next step and then just be open to receiving your wildest dreams and look at all this oshun right oshun oh sun um so you spell oshun 
O-S-U-N, right? Some spellings are different. It includes an H, but to me, the real spelling is O-S-U-N. And this has everything to do with the sun. And I feel like Oshun, the goddess Oshun could be blessing you right now, or you could be embodying qualities of the goddess Oshun. Um, and so spirit is like rewarding you with something in regards to the next big step in your life. Now, this could be coming into a merger, an acquisition, contracts with someone, but whatever it is, it's because you've offered something. You've offered yourself, you've offered your help, kindness, compassion. And you know what's interesting? I heard that Oshun comes to us in our time of need, when we're sad, when we're depressed, when we're not feeling the best about ourselves. And that's what I'm getting here. And the chrysote, chrys creosote bush looks beautiful. Like, look at the yellow flowers and whoever this person is or this woman is offering the chrysoto bush to the heavens, right? To the ancestors. That's what I'm getting here. Pile number one, pile number threes, excuse me. Keep going because you're about to be rewarded. And I feel like it could be through an ancestor, a, a, a angel, a, a spirit guide, spirit, of course, overall, you know what I'm saying? But they could be assisting as well through spirit in helping you to accomplish something big in your life, into ushering you into this golden age of your life right now, okay? So, whoo, pile number threes, beautiful reading. Let's uh, end your reading off with some advice, guidance, and wisdom. Tell us more, spirit. Last messages for our pile number threes. Clear, concise, accurate advice, guidance, and wisdom for pile number threes. Last messages for pile number threes. Advice, guidance, and wisdom for pile number threes to conclude their reading. Last messages for pile number threes to conclude their reading. Clear, concise, accurate messages for pile number threes to conclude their reading. Any advice, guidance, and wisdom? Ooh. We have last quarter moon in Aries, work through your feelings. Very interesting. So if you're feeling heavy, work through your feelings, right? St. John Worth, go in the sun, take a walk. You know, you're almost there. You're almost to your destination and your goal pile number threes. And I say this because we have the last quarter moon in Aries. And then we had the Adelita of Fire with Cayenne um, clarifying this ten of wands. So keep going, baby. You can do this. Look, full moon and Scorpio break through the tension. Work through your feelings and break through the tension. That's basically the same sentiment. So as long as you keep going, you cannot lose. Spirit is rooting for you. We're all rooting for you. <laughs> Number three is okay. You're entering into your golden era. So you have to keep going if you really want to get here quick as quick as possible okay so yes pile number threes with that being said i love you all so much my dreamy dreamers i really hope this reading resonated with you if it did please hit that thumbs up button like share and subscribe share this content with loved ones family friends or anyone who would best benefit from the messages provided here today if you all are interested in a gorgeous one-of-a-kind tarot journal and or to book a private reading with me look no further the link to my website where you can do just that is in the description box down below i love you all so very much and i really hope you have a blessed day. Leave some comments. Let me know if this reading resonated with you at all. Okay. I love you all so much. And I'll see you in your next reading. Bye.